I don't always make the smartest decisions. Case in point, today's video, which honestly, I'm not really that excited about making. And honestly, I don't even think very many people are gonna be watching because this is a graphics card video. I'm going to be doing a review of the Zotac RTX 3080 Ti Amp Hollow, which is their flagship RTX 3080 Ti. 3080 Ti is supposed to MSRP for $1,200. Even at that price, it's expensive. This card is currently selling for $2,000 or more, so it's just not really attainable for most people, but I'm still gonna go through with this video. I'm still gonna review this graphics card. Why? Because when Zotac offered the card and said, hey, do you wanna take a look at this and do a video on it? I said, okay. So it's mainly just because I gave my word and now I'm obligated to, so I'm gonna follow through with that even if there's only like five of you still watching this video. Excellent. Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120 millimeter air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120 millimeter fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. So the plan for today is just to run this card through its paces, uh, do some thermal testing, see how well the cooler performs, do some acoustic testing, and uh, maybe dabble in a bit of overclocking. And as mentioned in the intro, like I, I don't really have high hopes or expectations for this video because, you know, a lot of people are just tired of graphics cards right now and I don't blame them. Until the prices come back down, uh, there's not a whole lot of sense in covering them, but I'm doing it anyway because, like I said, I don't make the best decisions. One decision I am going to make, though, is that I'm not going to test out here. It's the middle of summer now. It's very hot. It's hard to maintain temperatures in the garage, so... I'm going to test over here in my little makeshift benchmarking corner. I've got my open air test bed set up right here, and the graphics card is actually already installed. So I guess we can start going over some of the specs and what makes this a little bit different compared to the Founders Edition. RTX 3080 Ti, which I also have right here, and I'm gonna use, be using this for comparison testing. So before I go over specs and stuff and show you guys the RGB effects and everything, I just wanna talk about how stupid the pricing is and why it makes this video a stupid video to make. If you search for this card, you can find it available on eBay right now. And this does say it's sealed and unopened for the low, low price of 2,000 US dollars. Once again, $1,200 is the MSRP for the Founders Edition. What Zotac would be charging for this card on their website if you were able to buy it there is $1,700, just a $500 markup over the already really high price MSRP of the Founders Edition, but you can't buy it there. You got to click that where to buy button and that will take you over to a Walmart third-party seller who's currently got it listed for $2,800. That's a great price. That's what a fantastic, I'm not surprised it only has a single one-star review with a price like that. I think Zotac also deserves some criticism for being one of the companies that has aggressively raised the prices, the MSRP prices of their cards over the course of uh, 2021. They took the 3060 Ti from 440 to 500 and then up to 530. The 3070 went from 540 up to 640. The 3080 went from 750 up to 840. And the 3090 went from 1550 up to $1,900. So obviously Zotac does doesn't really have any qualms about charging a premium, not even through like some third party or reseller or scalper like that, but just directly themselves charging a hefty premium for these cards and taking advantage of the current market situation. Now all RTX 3080 Ti's are going to share the same base specs. They have the same GPU, which is the GA102 or GA102-225-A1, and they have 10,240 CUDA cores, 80 SM units, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM, which is half as much as the RTX 3090, but it does have a data rate of 19 gigabits per second. This specific card has Zotax Amp Hollow Cooler on it, which is the same cooler that they used for the RTX 3080, and it has a gray shroud, which is plastic with three cooling fans, and it is a fairly lengthy card at 320 millimeters or 12.6 inches long and about 5.2 inches high. And yes, it is a triple slot card, so it's gonna take up three slots in your case. Video outs are the same as the reference design with three display ports and one HDMI, and the card has a 350 watt TDP. The most distinctive elements from Zotac's design are, of course, the RGB lighting, and that's why it's called the Amp Hollow or Hollow Black or whatever the actual name is. But it's got this holographic, quote unquote, strip down the side of the card, which sort of fades from a turquoise to like a pink, which actually looks kind of cool when the lights aren't even on. But once you actually power the card on, you can see the Zotac gaming logo light up, and then it's got these kind of racing stripes that go down the length of that 
holographic plates. And uh, of course you can program this right now. It's just set to standard RGB, but you can use some RGB controls to customize that a little bit more if you want to. It is a unique looking design if you're into the aesthetics of various RGB implementations. And then the card does have a back plate, uh, which does sort of tuck around the edge a little bit. You'll have to ignore the uh, bright pink not for resale sticker that's on here. I, I kind of have to leave that in place because this card is part of the giveaway uh, set or the set of giveaway items that we gave away uh, to support our charity live stream just a couple weeks back. Unfortunately, that giveaway is most likely closed by the time you see this video, but this card was going to an international subscriber. So many, many thanks to all of you who helped support that event. I really thought this Zotac gaming logo was gonna light up as well, but uh, for RGB on the back of the card, there's a pretty significant lines. I don't know exactly what to call them, but RGB lines that go across the back of the card. So it's a brightly lit card. If you slap this in a case that has a nice open side window, uh, you'll get a nice view of the RGBs on it, especially if you're going with the standard configuration. The Zotac 3080 Ti Amp Hollow also has a zero fan mode, so the fans won't spin up uh, unless there's a load on the card and it reaches a certain temperature, which is pretty standard across most graphics cards these day days as well. So the real question is, if you're gonna compare that card to something like this one, the 3080 Ti Founders Edition, what's gonna be the difference other than the size of the cooler, the efficiency and noise generation of the cooler? There is of course the individual performance of the actual GPUs that are in each of these cards, and that is somewhat anecdotal because that's gonna vary from card to card, so bear that in mind as you're looking at some of my test results today. You might get my Zotac Amp Hollow RTX 3080 Ti might perform within a certain range, but you might also have one that performs just a little bit worse or just a little bit better, and that's just the variance that you're gonna see when you're testing the same GPU against itself or against another version of itself. With all that said though, I'll be right back with some test results. We're gonna take a look at frequency, temperatures, noise, and then performance both before and after overclocking. Okay guys, I'm back and I have run through uh, a bunch of tests and I tested both the Zotac card here as well as the NVIDIA Founders Edition 3080 Ti and I have some interesting results to share with you guys. First off, I wanna point out ambient temperature out here in my living room area is about 78 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 25 to 26 degrees Celsius. And I've been using the Unigen Superposition stress test to stress test these cards, both at stock and with the overclock that I was able to dial in. I let that stress test run for 20 minutes to get my results. After 15 minutes, I turned off the AC and killed anything else that might be making noise out here and did a sound test. So I'll be sharing those as I go along as well. And then after 20 minutes, I recorded the frequencies and the temperatures using Hardware Info 64. So let's dive right into that. So first off, our RTX 3080 Ti Amp Halo from Zotac had an average frequency of 1,714 megahertz. That's running at stock. Compare that though to the Founders Edition, which was running at 17. 51.5 megahertz after the 20 minute stress test. That's about 40-ish megahertz faster. So it was running faster out of the box. However, the Founders Edition had to run a much higher fan speed. And I'll be showing you guys that in just a second. After dialing in my overclock and running the same test, we were able to boost the frequency by a little over 100 megahertz up to 1821.9 megahertz for the Zotac card. However, the Founders Edition, I was also able to boost up just shy of 100 megahertz hitting 1847.5. Although again, the fan speeds for the Founders Edition were quite high and I'll get to those in just a second. I wanna show you the overclocks I dialed in first using the Zotac Firestorm app. For the Zotac card, I bumped up to 81% fixed fan speed for the overclock because keeping the GPU temperature down can result in higher frequencies. I was able to go to plus 180 on the GPU clock, plus 10% voltage, and plus 1266 on the memory. And that's a significant boost over the stock memory frequency. Meanwhile, the power slider on these cards goes up to 10, plus 10%, basically 110% for power, which is actually less than you can do with the Founders Edition, which lets the slider go up to 114% for power. And since both of these cards have the same board power of 350 watts, it means you're actually able to get a higher board power out of the Founders Edition card than with this Zotac card, which is a little disappointing given that it is a flagship card, but it is what it is. For the Founders Edition overclock, I bumped up the fan speed to 100%, and that's because at stock, it was running close to that already. I did plus 100 on the GPU, plus 10% voltage for the same voltage boost for both cards, but I was only able to go to plus 800 on the memory for the Founders Edition card, and then of course that 114% 
Power limits. Let's talk about noise and fan speed though, because I feel like that's a pretty significant difference between these two cards. The Zotac 3080 Ti Amp Halo at stock was running at about 49.9 dBA, and that's with the fans running at about 1683 RPMs on average. They were fluctuating between about 1700 to 1800 RPMs. The dBA range on my sound meter was about 49.7 to 50.1, and at that fan speed and level of noise generation, it's actually a pretty pleasant experience. I would call this a nice, quiet card, what you would expect from a big beefy aftermarket cooler with three fans on it. Let's give it a listen. Now compare that to the 3080 Ti Founders Edition, and this was something that I complained about in the 3080 Ti Founders Edition launch video, which was that I feel like Nvidia really had to ramp up the clock speeds on this card since it uses the same cooler as the 3080 rather than the big beefier cooler from the 3090. As a result, the fans ramped all the way up to 87 to 95%, often getting up to about 3400 RPMs. The averages that were reported were 3210 to 3260 since the max fan speeds on each of those fans is a little bit different. And that resulted in not a very pleasant experience in terms of noise generated. I recorded about 60.8 dBA on average. It was fluctuating between 60.5 and 61.3. And let's give a listen to that. So hopefully you can tell that the Founders Edition card is running significantly louder there. Now compare that to my overclock settings with the Amp Hollow here. For this, I set the fan speed to a fixed 81% and I was trying to hit a mid-range between not going all out 100% where it was really just not a pleasant experience at all, but giving it enough fan speed that it's gonna keep the temperatures down and hopefully lead to higher clock speeds. However, just listening to it with the overclock, we're at 58.7 dBA on average. It's fluctuating between about 58.5 and 59. And at 81% fan speed, they're running at 2,450 RPMs. So let's give a listen to that. So note that even with this overclock setting, the Zotac card is still running quieter than the 3080 Ti Founders Edition, and that was something that I found to be a little surprising. Now, I also overclocked the Founders Edition card, but because even at stock, the fans were getting up to 87 to 95%, I just set all the fans to 100% maximum, which is about 3400 RPM on the slower fan and 3800 RPM on the faster fan. That gave me a sound level reading of 62.8 dBA on average. That was fluctuating between about 62.5 and 63 occasionally spiking up to 66, but here's a listen to that. So if you're concerned about the amount of noise that your graphics card produces, then the Zotac card definitely wins over the 3080 Ti Founders Edition. Let's now take a look at temperatures. At stock, the Zotac card was running at 71.5 degrees Celsius on average on the GPU, and then the GPU hotspot was at 78.4. There's also a memory junction temperature, which, which is actually pretty important for these higher end RTX cards. The memory can get really, really hot, especially at higher frequencies. 89.5 degrees Celsius was what the Zotac card was getting up to at stock, and that is perfectly fine. As long as you're not getting closer to 100, you should be okay with that temperature on your GDDR6X memory. Compare those temperatures to the Founders Edition's average temperatures, and you'll note that the Founders Edition is running cooler here. However, again, the Founders Edition was running at much higher fan RPMs and was much louder, so that's somewhat to be expected. I was hitting 64.8 degrees on average for the GPU, 72 degrees on the hotspot, and 103.6 degrees on the memory. And here's what I think was happening. I think the memory was running so hot on the Founders Edition card that it was jacking up the fan speed in order to try to account for that and keep the memory temperature down. And as a result, the GPU was actually running at a higher frequency, even though, even though the memory was dangerously close to overheating. So now let's look at my overclock temperatures. And again here with both cards, I'm running at much, much higher fan speeds. So that's why the average GPU temperature is actually down by about 10 degrees uh, when overclocked for the Zotac card to 61.7. The hot spot was down to 69.2 and the memory temperature was down to 80.6. Uh, with 80% or 81% fan speed, this card stays nice and cool, which is good. Meanwhile, with the Founders Edition card, since it was running at such high fan speeds at stock, we didn't see any improvement. We actually saw things get a little bit warmer when overclocked. So the uh, average temperature went from 64 up to 66.5. The hotspot went up to 73.7. And the memory temperature went up to 106.7 degrees on average, and it was getting really hot max up to 112. So that's telling me 
the memory on the Founders Edition card is just, it's running way too hot. And I think the fans are attempting to compensate for that. And while that does lead to lower GPU temperatures and higher GPU frequencies, it also is not as pleasant of an experience because of the noise that's generated. Finally, to validate performance, I ran 3D Mark Port Royal. And the Zotac RTX 3080 Ti Amp Hello had a stock score of 12,728. The Founders Edition scored about 150 points more than that, hitting 12,872. Meanwhile, overclocked, the Zotac card hit 13,542 and overclocked the 3080 Ti Founders Edition was still able to edge it out hitting 13,724. So to sum up, if all you care about is performance, the Founders Edition card at stock and overclocked performed just a little bit better. I would say not better enough to warrant the increased fan noise and RPMs that it had to do for that. So if you're looking for a more balanced option, I would say the Zotax cooler definitely did a great job at both keeping the GPU and the memory cool enough, the memory in particular, while also sticking to a nice mid-range fan speed that was a pleasant gaming experience and didn't create too much excess noise. But then the flip side to that is the price. And if you can actually get a 3080 Ti Founders Edition for $1,200, well, that blows this out of the water. The upgrade price for this card over a regular 3080 Ti is basically the cost of an RTX 3070, $500, going from $1,200 to $1,700. And that makes this card pretty much impossible to recommend if you're gonna have to pay that much to say nothing of the prices that are, it's currently selling for at places where you could actually check out and buy it, which would be eBay and Walmart for $2,000 or $2,700, which is just even more absurd and is part of the reason why there's only two of you left who are still watching this video right now. So the Zotac RTX 3080 Ti Amp Hollow or Hollow Black, it says Hollow Black on the box. I don't know if it's Amp Hollow or Hollow Black, is a good card. It's got a good cooler. I don't think the aesthetics are terrible. It's got some RGB on there. Nothing to really complain about too much. Aesthetics are fairly subjective anyway. Then there is the price. The price is absurd, and it's unfortunate and disappointing to see Zotac sort of leveraging the current situation and shortage as much as they have been with what they've done with the prices of their regular 3080s and everything, and the price that they're listing this at. Again, very bold for Zotac to just say, you know what, this card's $1,700, $500, over the Founders Edition MSRP. That is absurd, I do not approve, and that's just Zotac saying, well, people are gonna buy it anyway, so let's just make as much money as we possibly can. Zotac, I think you should also consider stuff like public opinion, because if hopefully graphics cards aren't insanely overpriced in like in a, a few months or hopefully by next year, I think people are gonna remember stuff like this and people are gonna look back at the companies who they felt like did as much as they could to make the best out of a bad situation. And then there are gonna be other companies that people will remember as only having leveraged and taken advantage of the situation as much as they possibly could in order to charge the consumers as much as they possibly can for the graphics cards that they're putting out. And Zotac, you're not putting yourself in a very good situation that way. I wish I could just talk about the card's thermal performance and the fact that it kept the memory temperature down and stuff like that. But honestly, I spent too much time on this already. Let me know what you guys think of this graphics card. Again, like the two or three of you that are still left watching this video, down in the comments section below. I really appreciate that. For my part, I made a commitment to do some coverage on this graphics card, and I decided rather than to try to do something gimmicky or something that I was gonna be able to make some clickbait title for that I thought would get a lot of views to just try to give it a fair shot against the Founders Edition. And hopefully that's what I did today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button on your way out. You can also find links to the graphics card and the test bed and stuff like that down in the video description, as well as links to my store where you can buy merch with the thumbscrew logo on it. Very popular, very high quality. And uh, check out my, my coasters. Those are, those are doing really well. And, I, and there really, really should be more stock coming in for those pint glasses. People have been asking about those so much, um, but that'll let you do the whole set with the coasters and everything. All right, that's all for this video. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.